towards the end. Okay, so coming towards the end, and um, suburbia then. I put the suburbs found around the edge of the city. So what we've done in the last two pages is move from the center outwards, away from the, the center of the city, okay? Uh, in between the two wars, the First and Second World War, okay, urban areas grew rapidly at this time, due mainly to the introduction of public transport. So between the First and Second World War, about 100 years ago, um, urban areas started to grow massively, okay? This came after the inner city housing. So now we're on the next layer out. All right, all that land is still taken up by factories in inner city. We're building the next layer. This outward growth, known as urban sprawl, we've defined earlier, led to the growth of numerous private suburbs. Okay, so people living further away from the CBD. There was good public transport. These people could afford a car, and they had more space out here as well to themselves. Okay, as each new housing estate was built, <coughs> its distance from the CBD and its sh and the shops increased. This led to the growth of small shopping centres within the estates so now you can see it's almost like having a small town right on the edge of a big city all right people didn't want to live in those cramped little houses with lots of pollution so they moved out to the edges all right and then there was so many people living out there new small centers began so i said neighborhoods began developing their own little centers all right <clears throat> again a lot of this just think about what you would do if you were living in a little cramped area right beside a dirty factory and you saved up money you still want to work, you still want to keep your job, but you'd move out a little bit away for a better quality of life. Okay. Uh, then, okay, there's also an increased amount of green space. This is another change that occurred, okay. Due to the decrease in land values away, uh, away from the CBD, increase in land available towards the edge of the urban area. So as you move to the edge of the cities, there's more land available. It's cheaper, so increased amount of green space. And as we said, it's scientifically proven that that makes people healthier and happier and thus they work better. Uh, also, people began commuting so they could have, they could live further away from the CBD. All right, we've already defined that word as well. So then the rural urban fringe, think about what these words are. All right, countryside and city, where the countryside and city meet, just like a coastline where the land and the sea meet, this is where the city and the countryside meet. So it's the last edge of the city, okay? Urban sprawl continued with land on the rural urban fringe becoming mainly used for a couple of things. New industrial, uh, sorry, new housing, new types of housing, all right, or new large industrial sites. The industry is moving out of the cramped CBD out to the edges now, all right? So low, uh, low density, high quality housing. So now we've got that high quality housing, larger areas, big gardens, things like that. Houses, modern amenities, okay, large houses, modern, so all mod cons, uh, everything you'd want in a house, TV, washing machine, garage, all of that, okay, and they had large gardens, so now we've changed completely from those little houses in the inner city to these large uh, houses with everything you want. Okay, so on to page 47, just a small bit to do here, all right, so again, um, in the 1950s and 60s, so moving on, <coughs> Uh, local councils cleared the worst of the slums and poor quality housings from the inner city. All right, many were evicted and residents were rehoused out on the edge of the city. So eventually, they got around to clearing out all the terrible uh, houses and rundown factories in the inner city. People were moved to the edges. Okay, so now we've got our urban renewal where they went back in and tried to fix up the original, the original city centre. Okay, uh, rubber, <coughs> but. Uh, well, we're going to look at greenfield sites in a, in a couple of minutes as well, right? The rural urban fringe as the ideal location for future development. So because there's so much space out here away from the centre city, it's been seen as an ideal area to develop, all right? There's less traffic. It's easier access, okay? It's more attractive and less polluted. So, of course, we want to build on these greenfield sites on the edge of cities. At the same time, though, uh, there's a conflict between those who wish to increase the econ the economy and the extension of the urban areas all right but then doing this expanding the city has a massive impact on the environment okay which is very very bad so there is a bit of a conflict of interests now we have this down the bottom i'm not going to spend very long looking at this diagram okay so uh what we're going to do is it just shows what the cities are being used for as it okay so what we have here is a little diagram showing the competition it says in here competition for uh, the use of land on the urban fringe okay so the red is the city center 
and then you've got i've highlighted these four things okay this is what the economists want they want to build sewage plants they want transport routes they want housing they want large areas for business all that could happen on the rural fringe at the same time we need to protect our national parks okay we want to protect na uh, ha habitats for wildlife farmers land is out here we need to grow our food if we keep building stuff we'll have no land left for this so there's a big competition about this which we're going to look at now for a couple of minutes all right okay so what we're going to do is i just want to run through okay sorry uh, powerpoint wasn't working so what i want to do is very quickly run through uh, a couple of bits just some pictures first to help you try and understand these different areas we've discussed. The CBD will look like this. Look at any cities, CBD New York, Tokyo, Paris, Berlin, London, LA, where you got the, because there's a lack of space, okay, you got the skyscrapers. Notice how dense all the buildings are packed in and there's no green space, okay? Very expensive land. The inner city then wraps around the CBD. Okay, you can see some high-rise flats like we discussed. See these rows of houses, row after row, packed in, okay? Very little green space again. Now you can see further out in the distance, there's lots of green space out where the suburbs are, all right? So you go to the suburbs, houses are bigger, lots of green space, nice wide roads, lots of individual cars and so on. Then you go out again, the next layer, the urban fringe. Okay, this is a massive railway, so good transport, factories out here now, you can see some residential over here, lots of open space, okay? So the land is cheaper, there's more space and so on. Now, when it comes to trying to find new places to build, we've got greenfield sites out here and brownfield sites in here, okay? So we're going to just look at those two very quickly and make some notes, all right? So, uh, because land is so limited in cities, most places are now having to regenerate or redevelop old areas of the city to keep up to date. All right, there are two different types of land which can be used to do this. So you got greenfield. Okay, you can see maybe you can't see but there's a city right on the far edge of this photo. So you got new land where you could just keep expanding, build new houses for people or new industry, or else you can go into the city and rebuild rundown old sites which are left like this. Okay, so first of all, little definition. I don't think that's too complicated, okay? Greenfield versus brownfield site. Greenfield is brand new, lots of vegetation. Brownfield, built on before, so on. Now you need to do these, this table and the next one. The greenfield site has advantages and disadvantages, okay? So the advantages, plenty of open space to use and expand your business in the future. No old buildings to tear down. Look at the picture. If you were to build here, nice simple flat land, here you'd have to remove all this and then start. Easy access, there's no surrounding buildings, land is very cheap, all right? no pollution or mess already there. The disadvantage of this, it destroys the environment. Okay, It sets a very harmful precedent for expanding out non-stop into the rural areas. If you build out there, you're going to have to build new transport systems to get there. New roads, maybe a new railway, something like that. There's no existing infrastructure. If you're to build in a new area, there's no sewage system, no electricity wires or anything. You have to connect all it up. It's very expensive. And the more you build out here, the more traffic and congestion and pollution will follow. Okay, so Greenfield has good and bad uh, sides to it. Just the same as Brownfield. Last bit of work. Advantages and disadvantages. If you can remember one of these, the Greenfield or the Brownfield, the other one is just the opposite. So the disadvantages of Brownfield. Lots, uh, can have lots of pollution and mess left from previous usage. It's costly to remove previous buildings that were there. Uh, this is wrong. That shouldn't be there. Apologies. Okay, don't put that one in. <clears throat> uh, it can be hard to access with little room. If you go into a space that's already been used and surrounding, surrounded by other buildings, it's very difficult to access. Lack of space to expand. You're surrounded by buildings. You can't expand much, okay? Whereas the advantages... You're already in the center of the city. You've already got electricity and so on set up. Uh, reduced demand for car use because you're in the city. Reduces urban sprawl as you're not uh, building outside the city. And can re improve the city sites by removing ugly and rundown buildings. Okay, so you can think of even Nassau in that sense. There's lots of buildings that should really be knocked down and something else put there. So, okay, that is our work for today. All right, a lot of notes and a lot of work to do. But there's no assignment with today's work, okay?